Hello everyone and welcome to another Top Tips for Archaeology graduates. Today I'm joined by Catherine from the University of Winchester. Hi Catherine, how are you? Hi Penny, I'm really glad to be here. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. I'm really excited to be talking to you today because we are celebrating the fact that your volume, uh, Authority, Gender and Space in the Anglo-Norman World, which Catherine will now hold up for us. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> has been nominated for a really prestigious prize, which is the Alice Davis Hitchcock Medallion, which is an architecture prize. And so we're really excited um, to be seeing one of our former alumni out in the world and being very successful. So that gives me a really great intro to asking you, Catherine, about your job. What is it that you do on a day to day basis? And uh, tell us some of the things that you enjoy and some of the things that you find more challenging. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm a lecturer in early medieval history now. So I've, I've switched disciplines again. And that constitutes kind of everything that you think lecturers do plus more. So you, you, you teach, you design modules, you design assessments, uh, you lead field trips, which is like the best part of all of the teaching. Uh, you do all the paperwork behind the scenes. There is always a form for something, uh, especially at my university, sorry. Um, you know, it's a, you know, the admin behind it. And, you know, then I also do things like I'm a program leader for, for a master's degree. So you help try to design and shape how programs actually look and how students experience the programs. Uh, and then of course you, you research as well as, as a part of the job to sort of research within in the institution and, and uh, do things like like write books and write write journal articles and things like that so so people can uh, can share uh, you know geekly share the love of stuff that you love is is you know I'd say the, the best part of my job is getting people to get excited about the stuff that I'm excited about it's it's you know ultimately it sounds very selfish because it's like no this is amazing and this is interesting and you all will think that it's interesting too uh, which I which I deeply deeply <laughs> enjoy to be honest with you I think um, one of the most challenging things about the job there is actually um it, it it can be a bit all consuming right because it is you know your, your job as as an academic lecturer in the university is to is to teach and is to research but it's all of the contingent things around that too so you know the administration the paperwork the meetings there's so many meetings yeah uh, you know absolute time crunches and 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 I think because, you know because I love what I do so much, it's really hard to put it down. You know, it's really hard to put it away at the, the end of the day. And that that's not a humble brag. Sometimes it's like I really do need to like have dinner or you know take a run or something like that. You know, something good for me. So I think that's something that I find challenging. And I, I work a lot in you know just like the really basic like life skills of time management to try to to work with that kind of negotiation between being really busy, doing stuff that I really love, but also doing stuff that isn't my job that I really love too. I think that's a really uh, honest answer that time management is so important to, to academics. It yeah. just is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think if I would have known, you know, like seven years ago when I started what I know now, I'd probably function a little bit differently in terms of that, that time management, man. Like that no one was joking when they say this is a life skill that you really need to have. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the one thing I wish someone had told me before I started my career in academia is how much time I would spend in meetings. It's unbelievable sometimes just how many meetings yeah, <laughs> absolutely yeah, yeah yeah I have actually I have a little I have a mug in my office that I hold up every night I just sort of quietly sip coffee from it but the mug says something it's something like um survived another meeting that should have been an email <laughs> the adult world though I think it's not just academia has, has a lot <laughs> has a lot, of, yeah, a lot exactly. of, of meetings so can you maybe tell us a little bit about how you got into your role um, from being a graduate from York through to to working at the University of Winchester yeah it, it was um it was a very circular route as I'm fond of saying so I, I finished my MA in medieval archaeology and I, I was interested in doing a PhD, but it just wasn't the time for me to do it. I wanted some time off after, you know, it's a really intensive one year master's degree. So I, I moved away and I actually got into museum work. So I'd worked into, I'd worked in museums before I did my MA as well in collections management and registration. So I went and um, sort of found my way into finding another job within that world. I worked at an art museum again for about another six years between between my master's and my PhD, which is really lovely. And it was an art museum and I was the assistant registrar, which meant that I had the vault of the art kind of at my beck and call as it were. So, you know, I know you just like learn something every day about, about something new. So I have like a, a random like love for Huguenot silversmiths and things like that that come out of these these years you know and <laughs> yeah. it, it just kind of got to a phase of of um with that career i if i wanted to sort of progress in that career i either needed to wait for my colleague to retire 
um, but she should never retire because the museum would fall down without her. You know, you, you always know people like that. And if I wanted to progress in that career, I would have to move cities to, to find a new museum to work at. And I think I just started thinking about, well, if I'm going to move cities, what am I going to do when I move cities? And what did I want to do to begin with? So I thought, okay, well, I, you know, I wanted to do a PhD, so let's, let's look into this. And so I just started kind of looking at museum or excuse me, at universities, because there's a few areas I thought about going into. And as it happened, one of my, my course mates actually on the MA at York had just finished her PhD actually at the university where I got my PhD. And, and, and you know, we'd been chatting about it and she said, you know, we've got a couple of different people in a couple of different disciplines who want to co-supervise and we've got some money for international students. So why don't you, you know, think about that? And so I, I almost literally flipped a coin between these two topics that I was thinking about studying uh, and, and kind of landed where I ended up, which is looking at gender and, and, and you know, land holding, elite land holding in the conquest period. Um, and it was quite a, it was a really interesting transition between them too, because it was, it was a matter of, you know, you fill out these forms and they go to people that you've sort of spoken to on the phone, but you don't, because I'm international, you know, I didn't actually know anyone and mm. you don't have even, you know, pre-Zoom, you don't have interaction, you know, you don't, you don't get a feel for people and things like that. And, you know, interviewing for, for my PhD at four in the morning, local time, because I, I didn't, I didn't have the gumption to say that's really early. Can we do it a little later, you know, and, um, and, you know, but, you know, fortunately was, was accepted at that point. And, and then, you know, did the PhD, did the kind of jobbing around that you do after your PhD, um, you know, working in six institutions in a year and things like that. And yeah, I know, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, b because I, I'm, I'm international because I, I don't, I'm not a citizen, it was either um, be in a position to have a permanent post or move back to the US. And I just wasn't in a position to, to want to do that at the time. So I just really, kind of hustled a lot and 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 uh, and ended up being lucky enough to to be in a position to, to get a position when when one was out there so it really was you know a really weird circular journal like from archaeology to museums back into archaeology and history and now I'm in a history department but I also teach public history and, and, and heritage management and things like that as well so it's all kind of weirdly come together. I don't know if I've answered that question or if I've just kind of rambled, to be honest with you. Uh, that's, that's a fascinating journey, but also I think quite a sort of um, interesting journey that a lot of people follow, which is that careers aren't one trajectory and that you mm -hmm. can start several different trajectories. And at some point they seem to fall into place and come together, yeah. bringing your areas of different expertise. And you wouldn't have been in the right place at the right time if you hadn't have had the kind of very different experiences and perhaps jump from museums back into archeology span and things like that. Yeah. And I think it's just worth sort of highlighting and, and being honest about the fact that academic jobs are very competitive to get into, yeah. to get the permanent position. And I know I was well, well into my mid 30s before I had my first permanent position and I think it's worth being honest with people that yeah. that's it's not a straightforward trajectory and it can take a long time before that lectureship um, appears. Gosh no yeah and I, I think if, if you know if anyone's moving from from an MA to a PhD too I think it's I always think it's worth pointing out that MAs can be very tiring it's okay to take some time off I mean I I kind of went to the other direction of, of you know taking about 10 years off but at the same time it was it was you know, I needed it and that's okay. I think you see a lot of people go straight through and, and uh, I think that can be, that can be, that that's, you know, has its own set of challenges and to, to getting to the other side of that as well. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's, you know, career wise becoming a lecturer, I don't think there's really an advantage to one or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. So yeah. can I ask, do you still draw on uh, your skills that you learned during your master's at York? Or what are the kind of things that you, you kind of look back on and think, oh, I'm really glad we did this when I was doing my master's? There, there, there are two things that really stand out. So one is um, excavation at Castle Howard outside of Melton. And that was something that was done, sort of the opportunity was presented through the department. And it was absolutely amazing. We were excavating to find Hinderskelf, the village, which was, you know, on the grounds. There's these lovely, you know, sculpted landscape grounds of, of, of Castle Howard. And it was just, it was great experience. I mean, it was great archeological experience. It was great, you know, excavation experience, uh, but it was also just great to, to be there and be a part of that and, and sort of understand you know, the landscape and the building and everything and the people, everything as a whole. And as a part of that too, I, I, I was lucky enough to do some of the public stuff a few times, like give the tours and like do the children's days and things like that. And, and you know, obviously when the three-year-olds are shaking the, 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 the sieves and things like that. But, uh, and I just, I really loved communicating that way too. I think 
that was that really kind of um, opened my eyes to something that I didn't really realize was a possibility with this kind of area of, of, of working and researching in this way. And I also, I took the buildings module with Kate Giles, which I mean, I think almost directly leads to this, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm still doing buildings all these years later. And, you know, I, I still talk to Kate uh, relatively regularly. She still helps me out and, you know, sends me a support and encouragement and things like that when, when I've got research questions. So, I mean, that was, um, you know, I'd, I'd never known before that you could use a building and look at a building and understand people in this way. And that just really, in a really direct way, you know, is something that I still still very much use, you know? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if not if not that module, then not this book, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see those di direct, yes. direct yeah, connections. Exactly. Yeah. So can I finish up by asking, what are your top tips for people who want to follow in your footsteps, who are interested in medieval archeology span or interested in becoming an academic? You know, the, the one thing that I remember that I wish I would have known when I did my MA was um, everybody else in that room has questions. You know, like I remember sitting in seminars, they're really small groups, which is really, really lovely. Um, but also, you know, I'd taken a year out and I'd come from international, you know, I'd moved from from the US back to the UK and everyone around me seemed so smart and knew so many things. And and I was just sort of, you know, kind of not quite a mouse in the room, just kind of going, well, I, don't, I don't want anyone to know that I don't know things. <laughs> and and as it turns out, everybody else had the same questions, you know, so I, I that that's my top tip is, you know, somebody else has that question too. There's there's nothing wrong with, you know, asking these questions and, and, and you know, someone else will, will will probably be really thankful not just you to try to understand things and and i mean that's that's something i, I still keep doing is uh, you know keep on saying i'm sorry i have no idea what you're talking about what's that acronym for what's the you know the, i don't understand this building code you know uh, you know these these are things you know you don't know what you don't know until someone presents information in front of you and there's nothing wrong with saying i think i need to know a little bit more about what's happening here um, and also just do everything that you want to do. I mean, especially if, if you're, I mean, I, I speak again from an international experience, you know, I, I, I had one year there and I'd, I'd studied abroad there not in, in England, not in New York as, as an undergraduate. So I was kind of familiar with the culture and the territory and things like that. But, you know, if, if you're, especially if you're an international student, just take advantage of where you are. There's so many interesting things and fun stuff to do. It doesn't have to cost, you can get on a bus and go walk around the moors and experience these beautiful, beautiful places and you know just do everything that you you feel like you might want to do because it's a great chance to do so and and you never know when it's going to come back around and be useful or be meaningful and and uh, and and you'll you'll be very grateful that you you took advantage of the of, of what you could in essence yeah that's really fantastic fantastic advice to keep questioning and keep going for those experiences and opportunities when they arise. I want to say a huge thank you to you, Catherine, for joining us today and congratulations again on what is thank a really you. wonderful achievement. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I, I recommend uh, checking out uh, Catherine's book, which is Authority, Gender and Space in the Anglo-Norman World, particularly if you're interested in women and that Norman period. It's okay, a thank Very you. beautiful cover to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much to Catherine for joining us. Thank, thank you, thank Penny. You. Thank you to everyone who's watching. Join us again next time for more top tips for archaeology graduates. <laughs>